Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another PS4 tutorial. We finally have something new to talk about here on the PS4 with the release of FPKGI, which is a port of the original PKGI application for the PS3, which is now available on the PS4. So if you don't know what this is, it's basically a front end for being able to download package files from a server. So people can set up external servers that have maybe hundreds of package files that you can download and you can just add their server to your config for FPKGI and you'll be able to access all of those package files and download them. Of course, you can also set up your own server locally on your computer to serve your own package files over your network if you want. That is another option there. So we'll cover all of that here in this video. So first of all, we're going to download it from It's Joker's GitHub repo. So download the latest pre-release build here, the package file. And of course, we're just going to copy that package file over to a USB drive. So we'll just copy it to the root of a USB. So once it's copied to the USB, we can go ahead and eject that USB drive and plug it in to our PS4. Once we're on the PS4, we're going to head to our Gold 10 settings, debug settings, package installer, and install the package file on to our PS4. So that's how we get the application installed. And then we're going to run the application first of all, so it can create all of the necessary files. So start up the application, and this will create all the JSON files on the hard drive that are required for the initial setup. Looks pretty bare bones right now because we don't have any package files on here. But what we're going to do is connect on FTP. So head over to your gold hand settings and go down to the server settings and enable the FTP server and note down the IP address and port number that show up there in the top left hand corner. From there, we're going to switch back over to our computer once more and get things set up on the computer. So I'm going to use FileZilla as my FTP client because we want to connect on FTP. So enter the IP address of the PS4 in the host box and 2121 as the port number and quick connect to connect to gold hen FTP. Then we're going to head into the data folder and then the FPKGI folder. And this is where all of your config files are located. So you've got the main config.json file here, and then you've got the content JSON files for all of your apps, demos, DLC, games, homebrew, and updates. So what might happen is you might get a server that just gives you those files. Like in this case, it gives you, uh, you know, apps, demos, games, and all of that. And you would just copy these in here and replace the original ones with the ones from the server, which will have all of the apps listed. Now, this, in my opinion, is not the best way to have a server set up like this, because that means that every time new package files get added and new JSON files are generated, you have to manually connect with FTP and swap the JSON files out with the updated ones that contain more packages every single time there's an update which is obviously not particularly useful. So I think the better way to do it is to actually edit the config.json file itself. If so if we copy this out to our computer and open this JSON file up, I'm just using VS Code, but obviously there are lighter weight text editors available. So anyway, if we open this up, you can see what we can do is actually change the content URLs. And I think this is a better way to do it because you can basically link to a JSON file that's stored on a server for the games, apps, updates, DLC, demos, and homebrew. Whenever the server updates the JSON files, then FPKGI will automatically grab the latest JSON files from the server and populate all of the package files. So whenever new package files are added, they just automatically appear in FPKGI without you having to manually swap the JSON files over with FTP to add more packages. So you literally just add the URL of where the games.json file is stored on the particular server that you're downloading the package files from, and you just add them in there and it will be dynamically added in FPKGI. But in order to demonstrate this, I can't actually show any external servers in this video for obvious reasons. So instead, I'm going to set up my own server on the computer to serve my own package files over the network. First of all, we need some package files to serve. So I do have a folder here that just has a bunch of random package files that I just copied in here. And of course, you can have package files inside subdirectories as well. It doesn't really matter. But we've got a bunch of package files here. We also need to run a web server in this location so we can serve those package files with FPKGI. So I'm just going to be using Node.js for this because it has a fast uh, HTTP server that you can install, which is pretty convenient. So I just downloaded the Windows installer and installed Node.js onto my computer. And then I can just open up a terminal window and install the HTTP server with the command npm 
install http dash server dash g and that will install the http server i already have it installed here so then if i just go into the location where my package files are stored i can just right click in this location open in terminal and then i can just type in http dash server to run an http server in this location and then if i go to you know the ip address of the server you'll be able to see here that we have all of the package files showing up here in the server so it is hosting all of these package files so with that we are pretty much good to go the only thing we need to do now is generate the json files which is a tedious process so i created a quick script to do this i'll leave it in the description if you want to host your own package files with this um so fpkgi underscore json so basically you just open this up you go into your package file location here grab the location of the package file and paste it in here and then enter your server address so in my case the server is running on my ethernet adapter which is this one here so 192.168.137.1 colon 8080 so i'll enter that in as the server and then we can click create json and that will create all of the json files for all of the package files it finds in this location and link them to the server address here as well so that is done so now if we go back into the package files folder and hit refresh you can see it's got all the icons generated and it's got all of the json files generated as well here as you can see for the games are all generated right here so so if i refresh on the server that inc that now includes all of these files we can see we've got our games.json file that is right here and i can just copy the link to the games.json file and we can start populating our config file with those addresses. So our games.json file, we'll add it in here. And again, same thing with all of the rest of these. This will just grab all of these files from the server. And that way, whenever we update the JSON files, we don't have to manually copy them over with FTP. It will just grab the latest ones from the server. So we can go ahead and hit save there and we should be all set. So now all I have to do is copy this one JSON file over and everything should be all set and ready to go. And that is it. We are all good. So now we just switch back over to our PS4. We need to close out of uh, PKGI and relaunch it again uh, because it needs to, I guess, be relaunched in order to properly refresh the main config file. But once that's done, we should be good to go here. No package files showing up yet. But if we press triangle and scroll down to the option here to populate via web and press X, and then triangle to close, you can see all of the games now properly show up. And now I can just press square on the game and it shows up. We get the image file, it says the title ID, the region, package version, required firmware I just set to null because I wasn't able to pull that data. Same with the release date, they all say 11-15-2024, um, just in this particular case. But yeah, as you can see, we can select it and if we want to download something and install it, let's install Minecraft, we'll just press X and it will start downloading the package file onto your PS4. So there we go. And it literally only takes a few seconds. I am on a wired connection. So this is about as best a speed as you can realistically expect here. So there we go. That is now downloaded. And then it should say that it has installed. There we go, ready to use. And there it is. Minecraft has been successfully installed. Let's do another one. Let's download uh, PT. We'll press X on that, it starts downloading. So this is 1.38 gigabytes. Again, on a wired connection, as fast as you can possibly expect here. And as you can see, it doesn't take particularly too long to do, you know, almost 1.4 gigabytes there. Just a few seconds and we are now finished downloading. And once it's finished downloading, it will start installing it automatically. And there it goes. We've got the different categories. So when I press R1, I can switch to apps. I can switch to updates. So I can install game updates here. As you can see, there's Elden Ring version 1.20. We've got, uh, you know, Resident Evil version 1.11. And then also we've got a bunch of DLC as well. Fallout 4, Far Harbor. Uh, so we've got all of those DLCs showing up in the DLC section. Now to show you why this method, in my opinion, is superior. Uh, again, if we want to update and add more package files to the, to the server here. So I do have Bloodborne with the 1.09 update. So I will cut bloodborne out of here and paste it into our package location where the server is running and then all i have to do is regenerate the json files again to include the new package files that i just added for bloodborne 
And now I should not have to replace the files in FTP because it should dynamically grab the updated JSON files from the server. So I can just press triangle and reload JSON files and bam, Bloodborne now shows up in here for downloading. And again, you can see how this would be useful for an external server because they just update their JSON files whenever they add uh, new package files. Those new package files will automatically be updated and will appear in your FPKGI application. Now, another thing you can do is add background images. So I've got a few background images to test here. I'll just throw them into the packages folder so that they're being hosted on the server itself. If we refresh here, you can see we've got a background image here, for instance. And all you have to do really is just again, edit your config.json file here and uh, add the URL here into the background URI. For some reason, I notice with this current nightly build, it doesn't seem to like using like a raw IP address in certain situations. So I've had to create like an actual domain name in order for this to load. So I'm sure that's a bug that will be fixed and patched out in a future version. But anyway, I had to do that to get the background image to load. I'd also recommend the populate via web setting that to true. Uh, that way, whenever you open the application, it will automatically try and grab the JSON files here from the web instead of the local ones. So I would also recommend doing that if you're using the setup. But anyway, with that over here, we can just go ahead and uh, copy the config file back over and that should be it. So we should have access to those background images too. So let's go ahead and just hop back on here. And yep, there we go. As you can see, we have got our background image successfully loaded here, uh, which is pretty awesome. And if I want to change that as well, I can just press triangle and then scroll down to, I think, change background. And then I could change this to maybe background image onepng And then boom, it changes to the other background image. I think that one's actually uh, better because you can more easily see the text on a dark, on a dark background. Uh, which is a little bit better than the uh, previous one. You can also change the save path, uh, which is the download location, I guess, where the package files are downloaded to. So you can also change that. Uh, you can also change the install once done if you want to just download the package files but not install them, which would be a little bit strange, but that's another option. Delete after install as well is something you probably want to have enabled so that it will delete the original package file once it's finished installing it that you don't have two copies essentially on your console at the same time. You can also like, you know, filter for region, content, size, name, title, ID, all of those filtering options in there as well. There's also an option to switch from direct download to back download. So it will download the package files in the background, which will allow you to keep using the application while it's downloading. Whereas with direct download, it gives you the little window that shows the download stats but with back download, you won't have any of that. You can keep using the application and browse your packages while it is downloading a package in the background. And I imagine a lot of servers that are going to use this will probably just bundle like the, a custom version of the package file because it is open source. Um, and then you just install it and it will have all of the JSON files already included with the custom background images and everything. So anyway, that is how you set up and use FPKGI, not just setting up the application, but also setting up your own server to use with it as well. So hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video.